When all else fails, play the blame game. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 filmmakers who blamed actors for failed movies. I don't think they like what they see. That means we're looking at filmmakers, whether that's producers, directors, screenwriters, whatever, who cast blame on the on-screen talent when their movies didn't pan out so well, either commercially or critically. All right, let's cast some blame. I never even thought this movie would get made. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Roland Emmerich blamed Will Smith. Independence Day Resurgence. You might be saying to yourself, wait, Will Smith wasn't in this movie. Yep, and that's where it failed, at least according to director Roland Emmerich. Uh, don't worry, when Control dies! Falling, it's called falling. No, Control dies. Originally conceived to be a two-parter following up on the events of the first film, Independence Day Resurgence was hit with a major blow when it was announced that its predecessor's biggest star, Will Smith, would not be returning, instead opting for a role in Suicide Squad. Was this, uh cheerleading tryouts. This threw a wrench in Emmerich's plans, and he had to, quote, cobble another script together and ultimately made something he didn't really want to anymore. Going off the poor receptions for both films, though, we're not sure either decision was right for Smith. Didn't I promise you fireworks? Yeah. <laughs> Number nine, Paul Schrader blamed Lindsay Lohan, The Canyons. Lindsay Lohan is no stranger to bad press, but the source isn't usually her director. It's hard for me too, that's why I tried helping you with the movie, because I care. But you don't have to go and say things that are gonna hurt me. In 2013, she starred in the erotic thriller The Canyons, which, though made for a frugal quarter million dollars, only recouped roughly 20,000. It's more fun to keep it a little complicated. Complicated? Discussing his dissatisfaction with the release, director Paul Schrader expressed bemusement over Lohan's utter absence from the promotional tour, and that he wanted to fire her during production for her similar, quote, unreliability. And then after casting, she just disappeared. She just stopped coming by the production office. I haven't seen her in like a month. Lohan responded by saying she would have loved to attend the film's premiere at the Venice Film Festival, but that her, quote, health and well-being was, quote, of the utmost importance. Seeing as she was regarded as the lone bright spot in this critical dud, she probably made the right call. Look, Christian's not gonna hurt me. If anything, I'm the one that's gonna hurt him. Number eight, Jerry Lewis blamed himself, the day the clown cried. Look, we get the pursuit of perfection, but there comes a point where you ultimately have to accept the work you've done and move on, right? Not so, according to writer-director star Jerry Lewis, who shelved his 1972 Holocaust drama The Day the Clown Cried for decades due to his sheer dissatisfaction with the project. My sense is that something like that happened, that he thought it was a good idea, and it slowly dawned on him that, that this is much larger than, than, than perhaps he'd realized. Continually questioned on the matter, the late comedian only ever pointed fingers at himself, one saying he, quote, lost the magic. But when they think he does not know, or that he does not care, they have no reason to care. And that's where you get a lot of trouble. Curious film fans might just get their wish, however, as Lewis gifted a copy to the Library of Congress in 2015, demanding it not be screened prior to June of 2024. So mark your calendars, maybe? Number seven, Kevin Reynolds blamed Kevin Costner, Waterworld. You would think you would know whether you like working with someone after directing them twice before. Yet despite directing Costner in Fandango and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, it was instead Waterworld that was the straw that broke the camel's back for Kevin Reynolds. This is my boat. I got it the way I like it. I take up space and you slow me down. Reportedly, Costner's incessant micromanaging on top of an inflating budget spurred Reynolds to exit the project toward the tail end of production, effectively ending their friendship. He'd go on to say, quote, Kevin should only star in movies he directs. That way he can work with his favorite actor and director. Boy, if you want to do something right, you've got to do it yourself. Thankfully, the flames were fanned enough for the two to reunite on the miniseries Hatfields and McCoys in 2012. Just could be any. Let's make your peace. Yeah, well, I never courted God before, Randall. 
How dare you hear me now? Number six, Tony K blamed Edward Norton, American History X. When you're the director of an awards contender, you typically expect to have final say on the project. However, that was not the case with American History X, where director Tony K saw creative control shifted to star Edward Norton when the time for editing came. You gotta let me do this my own way, all right? I'll take care of it. When the film was critically successful, especially for the Oscar-nominated Norton, it proved anything but for Kay, who went out of his way to slam Norton, calling him a, quote, narcissistic dilettante and spending $100,000 on ads in trade newspapers to hammer home the sentiment. Danny, who do you think you are? Dan, Dan, relax. Left. Who do you think you are? Take it easy, Dan. He even tried to have his name removed from the project and replaced with, we kid you not, Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, some bridges were burned. And everybody ate it up. They did whatever Derek told them to. Number five, Joss Whedon blamed the cast, Alien Resurrection. Oh, look, look, beautiful, beautiful little baby. Just five years after Alien 3 came out, which director David Fincher later lambasted, the franchise would see another entry criticized by one of its creators. I think it's fair to say that our smoothly running facility has suddenly developed a few problems. During an interview in 2005, Joss Whedon revealed he was thoroughly displeased with the final product of Alien Resurrection, for which he wrote the screenplay. He clarified that he didn't dislike it because they changed things during production, including the ending, but that they did, quote, everything wrong. From the casting, to the line reading, to the production design, to the scoring, there wasn't a single aspect of the film that pleased Whedon, who declared it, quote, almost unwatchable. Yikes. Real nice party, ain't it? Number four, Kevin Smith blamed Bruce Willis. Cop out. What happened, Jimmy? It just went south, right away. The whole thing went south, Jack. Upon seeing their comedic bickering in Live Free or Die Hard, one would think that Bruce Willis and Kevin Smith had a dynamic rapport in real life, too. Hey, hey, calm down, down. Just calm down, big boy. You calm down, it's my house. You're gonna tell me what I wanna know or I'm gonna beat you to death in your own house. Untrue. And working with Willis more extensively in 2010's Cop Out didn't exactly bring out the warm and fuzzies for Smith. I'm going to play the bad guy on this one. Doubtful. Undoubtful. Highly doubtful. Shortly after filming, he disparaged Willis's disinterest in promoting the movie when the time came, and that he had similarly little help on set either. According to certain reports, Smith used the film's rap party to thank the entire crew, except for Willis, whom he referred to as a, well, it rhymes with trucking stick. According to Smith, however, the two have since buried the hatchet. Number three, Otto Preminger blamed Marilyn Monroe, River of No Return. Here we have another star with more pull than the director. Not entirely confident in her abilities, Marilyn Monroe had her acting coach Natasha Latesse on set for the shooting of River of No Return. This didn't sit too well with director Otto Preminger, as Latesse's instructions to Monroe conflicted with his own. I suppose you never made a mistake. You're too perfect. You never made any. None that I didn't pay for. Unable to get the studio to ban Latesse from the set, Preminger took many of his frustrations out on Monroe, whom he later deemed merely a star and not an actor. Why do you hate her? Now what makes you think I hate her? You treat her bad. Apparently, time heals all wounds, however, as he lightened his stance in 1980, saying, quote, she tried very hard, and when people try hard, you can't be mad at them. One thing about this, the longer you last, the less you care. Number two, John Schlesinger blamed Madonna, the next best thing. There's blaming someone for ruining a movie, and then there's blaming someone for basically ruining your life. Don't you think there's a chance we can still work this out? Look, it's not you, okay? It's me. During the making of The Next Best Thing, director John Schlesinger clashed continuously with the film's lead, Madonna. I can't believe you let this happen. Me? You make it sound like you were seduced. According to Schlesinger, Madonna exercised a controlling nature on nearly every aspect of the production. Not only did this infuriate Schlesinger on set, it possibly contributed to the stroke he suffered some months after the film's release. In a letter released posthumously upon his death in 2003, he wrote, quote, I do not for one moment think that her behavior has not added to the reasons I have ended up here. Here being the hospital he was stationed at. Jeez, tell us how you really feel. What's the next best thing? We could turn back the clock. 
Nothing bad ever happened between us. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Ron Hutchinson Blamed Marlon Brando – The Island of Dr. Moreau Much like Edward Norton, Marlon Brando established something of a reputation for himself as being difficult to work with, mostly because he was. The longer that I'm here, the, the worse it gets, and I, I mean, this damn Montgomery won't fix anything. I died of Screenwriter Ron Hutchinson was perhaps the most taken aback by this on the set of 1996's The Island of Dr. Moreau. Hutchinson described Brando as a, quote, monster that was, quote, hell-bent on sabotaging the production. This is the most outrageous spectacle I have ever witnessed. Look at yourself! Not only would Brando insist on improvising all of his lines, merely getting him out of his trailer proved incredibly difficult, as he would rather gorge himself on, quote, industrial quantities of pizza. Why have you done this? <laughs> Don't you feel the heat as I do? I, I, I can't tolerate the sun. With such a troubled production, the film was a natural failure, cementing one of Brando's last movies as one of his worst. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.